Welcome! Ladies and gentlemen, today we're doing a sound design tutorial. We're gonna be taking sounds from this apartment and turning them into drum sounds. So after watching this video, you should be able to create your own drum sounds, your own kicks, snares, hi-hats, percussion elements. Also, you'll learn how to make them sound pleasing and punchy and snappy and clean. So having a portable recorder like this Zoom H5 is really useful because it allows you to just take this wherever you go and just record a bunch of sounds. But when you're at home, you can record some percussion sounds. That's what we're gonna be doing today. So I'm just gonna take this one, record a bunch of sounds, and we're just go to Ableton and just let's process them, make them sound finished and ready to use in your production. So. You can get really cool percussion sounds from like these things. So these should work as a really nice bell sound. So when it comes to recording something or hitting something with something, it is really important to change the element you're hitting something with. So it can be your finger or it can be a pen. It's gonna give you different sounds, so like rubbing your finger through this. Also, when you're hitting something and you put something on something, so I'm hitting this thing, it's a microwave, and I'm putting this thing, and a bunch of other elements, so they're just like uh, working as an as a additional layer. Okay, so the last thing that we have to have before making any sounds or basically sitting in the Ableton is to make some coffee, right? So we're gonna record this as well and it's gonna work as a noise or something like that. So once it's done, drag the file into your DAW. Make sure that the audio file is not stretched. Some of the DAWs like Ableton tend to warp the audio when you drag it in and create these markers and they'll stretch the audio in different parts and it'll make it sound worse. So make sure this is unwarped, this is original length file, no stretching, nothing, just the pure audio file from the microphone. And you don't need any really expensive microphones. You can use your phone to record stuff like hitting objects and making foley. Some of the phones right now have pretty good microphones, but obviously microphones like Zoom H5 will have much higher quality and I'm, I'm really, really surprised how clean this mic is and it's not really expensive. So now when you have an audio file inside Ableton, you can just start chopping it up, finding elements, parts that sound pretty nice and just turning them into percussion sounds. Okay, so now I cut a couple of sounds, percussion sounds like that, like this some keys, some noise, this is actually water. This is kick, this, is, this one sounds really cool because it was clipping, it sounds really heavy. So some percussion sounds, some like uh, sprays. So let's take this one, it sounds like a pretty nice material to make a kick from. So first of all, let's make this louder. Okay, so let's start with putting a distortion. I really like the distortion from FabFilter. It's a FabFilter Saturn. It allows you to distort things like multiband distortion. So let's just divide this in parts. That's the bottom of our kick, like a mid and top. Okay, so let's just start here. Choose like a distortion type. Sounds pretty nice. That's a really nice knock. And some top end, maybe a different one. With like a distortion plugins, you can really change the sound. So it knocks a little bit more. Um, we could try a different saturation, like not multiband saturation. To make like really hard hitting drum. This microphone is recording in stereo, so I would put a utility before any post-processing and just set this to like left or right, whichever sounds better. So we have a mono sound actually. We are not putting this in mono because when you put like a stereo sound in mono, the phase cancellation can happen and you'll lose sound. So if you choose one of the left or right um, sides, you'll get a full sound. So left side sounds pretty nice for me. Now we can put like more distortion. 
You can use really like any distortion plugin you want. We could use a transient shaper right now. Right, it gives a lot of transients. I really like to use while making drum sounds. I really like this tool because it shows you the waveform. And now we can see that this sound is actually really transient heavy. Right, we can make something like that. Longer, shorter, but instead of using, this is just an example. I have everything in one place. Uh, I made this rack from the mixing sauce. Uh, it's called drum master like there's everything inside. It's a transient shaper. It's saturation presence space control and Now we've added a transient as you can see at the beginning So now the sound is pretty heavy uh, we can add this taste knob which is like another saturation thing I like that some presence for some high-end that's cool. Now we can just turn off everything and see how how the sound changed. So this is before. Oh, really boring hit. Like a pretty beefy, hard hitting kick. So after doing this post processing, what I like to do is to just insta insert a new audio track and turn on resampling, arm the track and start recording. And there we go. We just made a drum. We just made the kick. Now you can take this even further. You can visually and manually and really easily just shape the shape the shape of the kick. So now let's make a different drum sound. Like now, once we've made a post-processing chain once, you can apply this to multiple kicks. So now, as you can hear, this kick it sounds pretty beefy, and it sounds amazing. So this is like a spray. I, I have like a compressed gas in a spray and just pss, spray it and sounds like shaker and make a shaker out of this one. So this one is more like a heavy, really harsh sound. So what we can do is we can just use these fades to like uh, shape it as a shaker. And then we have to open the EQ. This is a really harsh part. So I'm just going to cut this a little bit. Sounds better. And we can hear some low end. We can hear this sound in the right channel. So as you can see, a different channels because again, this microphone is stereo. Left channel and the right channel sound differently. So you may experiment with switching between left and right to see. Oh, that's a cool, that's a cool percussion. This one sounds a little bit like a snare. Let's see if we can make something with it. So as you can see, like this is really percussive, like the, the transients are really heavy. So we can like just compress them a little bit, use like a free clip. So this is a limiter. So now we can export that and work on this one. Resample again. Let's again put uh, with pop filter Saturn. And now let's maybe shift through presets. Sounds like a snare. Yeah, I think we can just export this one. Now what we can do, maybe transpose it down. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe let's put this here once again, because I want this to be a little bit brighter. Is this gonna work as a, as a hi-hat? Okay, let's maybe put a uh, erosion on this. I'll also make it mono. Okay, so it's brighter. And now we can now we can fade this a little bit like that. So we are not getting this really transient heavy hi hat. So the same thing, I guess. Just gonna resample this, put this here once again, and then pitch this up. That's a nice percussion thing. Um, also, this might be a little bit unconventional or something, but there's no rules in music production. <laughs> I like to use a little alter boy on drums or on percussion sounds and reducing the formants of the sound. So that sounds like a really nice percussion. I'm gonna just resample it and save for later. So again, maybe we can use distortion plugin pedal. Yeah, that sounds like a hi-hat. 
do this. Um, okay, so now we've made some percussion, we've made some kicks, snares, shakers. Now what we can do is actually like two things left. When you have like this sound like that, like a tonal sound like that. All right, it's a really long, like a bell. So now what we have to do is just resample, create a MIDI track, drag this file right here. And guess what? You can now play it as an instrument. Some reverb. Some portal. Okay, once again. Yeah, so maybe the last thing, let's just make a, make a drum loop. So uh, I hope this helped and I hope you learned how to make your own drum sounds. This is how I make some of the drum sounds from my sample bag. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. Have a nice day and see you in the next one. So that's it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, we can side on that subscribe button. Also, you can visit my site oversampled.us for some high quality samples, presets and free sounds.